couple different things we're talking about is. Back to multiplication. Uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is with multiplication, uh, because of the commutative property, I'm sure we remember that, the commutative, because of that commutative property which says that you can move stuff around, your life can be made much easier. Because today we're talking about uh, multiplying three factors. Multiplying three factors, which simply means this. If you're given this choice and you're supposed to multiply 6 times 3 times 5, 6 times 3 times 5, okay? You can always do it the most difficult way, just do it like it stands and do 6 times 3 is 18, and then have to multiply that 18 times 5 and get 90, but we do like to, if we can, make things easier if I have 6 times 3 times 5. Because of the commutative property, a second, let me redraw this, 5. Because of the commutative property, I can change those numbers around because sometimes I like to, some multiplication problems are easier than other multiplication problems. For example, if I were to move this 3, put it over here, and take this 5 and slide him over here, this becomes a much simpler problem because 6 times 5 is 30, and 30 times 3 is a lot easier to do than doing all this 5 times 8 to carry the 1 or whatever. So they're going to ask you, let's see what they ask you, they'll ask you to rearrange it, and because of that commutative property, you can't. Or this one here. Um, how about... 5 times 7 times 12. I need to do this all in one. 5 times 7 times 12. Now this one you might not even be able to do without moving around because if you did this the way it stands, you'd have to multiply 35 times 12. And we haven't done double digit multiplication yet. So, what number would you move to go where, would you think? Kyla? You'd move the 12 and the 7. Right, kind of flip-flop the 12 and the 7. That's going to take me a little time here. And the reason you would do that is because 5 times 12, 5 times 12 is 60. And then 60 times 7, you should be able to do that's not too hard. What is 60 times 7? It's a 0 down, 7 times 60 is 42, 420. So you always, when you're given that choice of more than one factor, or more than two factors, you want to try to think what's going to give me the easiest multiplication problem in the end to get all that done. Okay? And the other thing is. This. What about when we are in multiplication? What if we are missing numbers? We've had this before with addition and subtraction, I believe. If you have 6 times m equals 36, does remember what we talked about when we did addition and subtraction? Anytime you're missing a number, what should you do? Uh, think of an easier day. Thank you, Wade. You got it. Wade gets the prize for the day. Think of an easy multiplication problem. Maybe it's 5 times 2 equals 10. If I'm missing this 2, what do I do with 5 and 10 to get 2? Divide. Divide, and that's the same thing you'll do here. The nice thing with multiplication is you'll always divide when you're missing one of those two things. So your answer should be 6 because 36 divided by 6 is 6. Um, or, here's, a, here's another crafty, clever one they do. 3n equals 24. Welcome to the world of algebra. 
please know, please know this, children, because people get this mixed up, especially when they start this math stuff. Anytime you have a number next to a letter, that means multiplication. You could change this and write it like this, 3 times what number is 24. That is the same exact problem. If the letter and the number are next to each other, it means to multiply. And then you could say 3 times what number is 24? 6. 3 eight, times 6 eight. is 18. 3 times 8 is 24. Or sometimes they'll get really crazy on you and do this. Um, 6 times 5 equals 3 times what number? Well, you'd have to do what you can to figure out what you need. What 6 times 5 is? 30. And then 3 times what number is 30? There you go. So T equals 10. I don't know if there's anything else really to give you that's any harder than that. Uh, please remember, again, let me tell you for the umpteenth billionth time, when you're given these problems in the book, you need to write them down on your paper. I don't want to just see eight of my answer. I need to see all of these written down so that I can look at and say, yes, you know exactly what is going on. Perfect, good, everybody's happy.